Howdy! Welcome again to another lesson. This is lesson 22 with the Sudoku guy and today we're going to do a little bit of revision on what we've learnt before but more importantly I'm going to show you a very advanced technique which I call the trapezium sometimes called the skyscraper. So here we go. Here's our first scenario. Here we have a, a column where you may find yourself wanting to go outside the puzzle but I'm going to show you that you do not need to go outside the puzzle to find seven numbers because we have here a situation where you can guarantee what numbers are in here so all you have to do is use what numbers are left let me show you what I mean in this block here as we learnt before what goes in the middle here is very simply worked out by counting up to nine. One, two, three, four, five, six goes in there. Seven, seven goes in there. There's no seven on there anywhere else. Eight, eight goes in there. Six, seven, and eight can go in there. So now it adds up to nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Once you've done that, when you go outside the puzzle, all you need to do is to put down the numbers that are missing in these cells here. This one, this one, this one, and this one. And if you count through, one, two is one of them, three, three's not in there, four, four's not in there, and five. So those numbers are, can, can go in these, these cells here. That's my first scenario. Little clue make it easier for you. And sim something similar is over here where we have a block and again we've got three numbers in there. What are the numbers? We can work out what those numbers are and they are one, two, we need a two in there, uh, with threes here, fours there, fives there, six there, seven needs to go in there, eight and nine needs to go in there. Now you know that those numbers 2, 7, and 9 have to be there in that block, which means it's easy to work out what goes on down in here. So down here we have a 3 and a 2, but there's 2, we know for sure there's going to be a 2 there. Because we know for sure there's going to be a 2 there, we can eliminate this 2, and so this becomes a 3, and this becomes a 2. So there's a couple of scenarios and we're going to now come back in a second or so with another set of scenarios. Now I'd like to show you a scenario where you really need to understand the concept of top row, middle row, bottom row and patterns that can happen with just not one number but more than one number and left, center, right where you can also have patterns with one, two, sometimes even three numbers. In this case, here, we have a 2-8 here and we have a 2-8 there, a left and a center, which tells us immediately we need to have a 2-8 in here. Because if it's a 2-8 here and a 2-8 here, you've got to have the 2-8 on the right column. And because of that 8 up there, it becomes a 2 and therefore that becomes an 8. Very simple once you recognize these patterns. Now this particular one here is a top, middle and bottom. We start off with a bottom and a middle. Therefore, if you have a 3 and a 6 here and a 3 and a 6 there, they don't have to be in order, but as long as there's a 3 and 6 there and a 3 and 6 there, you know you must have a 3 and a 6 over here on the top. So, with that in mind, this 6 means that this can't be a 6 here, so that'll have to be a 3 and that'll have to be a 6. So there's another scenario just to help you review things. Here's some more scenarios. When I look at this chart, immediately I see a cleaver. Here it is here. I'll mark it out for you. There's two little fives there. There's the blade of the cleaver. And here is the handle of the cleaver. And we know from what we've learned with the cleaver before, two little fives there and two little fives there, meaning that only those in this block or this row, only five can go in those two cells, one or the other, same there. When that occurs, you know that this has to be a five in the handle. 
There's a couple of other things I'd like to point out over here. Let's have a look at these three blocks in here. When I look at this, I can see here a walking stick. Now, we know from previous lessons that if a walking stick appears, there's got to be three empty cells here. Because of those three empty cells, we know that you cannot have any of these numbers in those three empty cells. So therefore, let's have a look at this. Oh, we've already got a seven, but the two, uh, six and the eight have to be in these three cells in here somewhere or other. And so what I've got here is a two, so that's a six, eight. Here's an eight, so that's a two, six, and there's a two, six, eight. So we know that those numbers have to be over in here. Now that also tells us that a five, what about this five? It can't be here. Where could it be over here? No, it, no there's no space for it to go there. So it has to be over in this section here. If it has to be over in that section, therefore the five has to be in one of these two. However, let's look at this. Remember the system that we learned way back where after doing the horizontal blocks and the vertical blocks, then you look for a crossing where you take a vertical line, a vertical line and a horizontal line into a block where there was a number that you're looking for. In this case, it's going to be a five and we're going to look at this block here. If I take this five and go across there and take this five and come down here, we know the five must be there because that's the only place it can go. That's another way of saying, yes, if it's a five there and a five there, we know the five has to be there. Ready for the next scenario? Here we go. In this scenario, we are looking at this block here and the question comes up, how come we know that that's a 2525 two, matching pair? Well, let's look at this. Here's a two, that's a left. Here's a two, that's a center. So we know the two has to go there or there. But what about the five? Well, if you look carefully, if you've got a two five there and a two five there, you know that you have to have a 6868 six, here. So if, uh, if there's a 6868 six, here and this is a line in here, there's the only room is left for, is for a 2-5 and a 2-5. So having got that, let's look at this. Here's an 8. Where should the 8 go when it goes up here? Well, it could go there, but it can't because of that. It could go there, it can't because of that. The 8 will have to go there. And that's the simple answer to that scenario. Well, here we are to look at the most complicated uh, type of pattern that you can find to help you solve a really difficult puzzle. Now, the student that brought me this puzzle had done all as far as they could go and all these black numbers of what they'd done so far. Now, you may say, well, I can see how we could complete that puzzle. Yes, you can. But I want to show you another technique in case you don't see another route to go. There's so many routes you can go. This is called a trapezoid or trapezium and this sometimes is called a skyscraper. And it's called a skyscraper because it has a slanting roof. Now here's an example of a skyscraper and on the walls of the skyscraper is where we put the common number just like you do in uh, the X-wing. It can either be a four here or a four here or a four there or a four here. It doesn't matter which way, that's not important to us. What we're going to do is use this to get rid of other fours. Now bear in mind that this is looking at it where the base is down here and the walls are here and the roof is here. If you turn it this way, now the walls are a row, not a column. You could have it this way, you could have it this way, you could have it this way, you could have it this way. All those are different ways in which you can locate a skyscraper. Let's now look at the puzzle. In this case, the student who brought this to me had done all the black numbers and got that far, and then I suggested, let's look for a skyscraper. And we found one. If you look carefully, you will notice that down on this column, there's only two fours, two cells with a four. So that becomes the wall 
of the side of the skyscraper and over here we have in this column only two fours. So that can become the wall of the skyscraper to the high part. Now the question is what do we do next? We are only going to work, and this is important for the skyscraper, we're only going to work with these two rows here because that's where the roof is. From this corner to that corner we have two rows and two blocks that we're going to work in, nothing else. With that in mind, let me show you what we mean by seeing. This is the terminology that took me a while to understand. Very important. If I take this four here with the corner of the roof and go along this row, I find that there's another four here. However, that four can also be seen by this four. So what do we mean by can you be, what can be seen? To be seen means it has to be in the same row and can be seen by another corner of the um, skyscraper if it's in this block. Very tricky. So when we do, when we go that route, we take this four, we go along the row and then we look, we find the four and then we ask the question, from this four, the corner, can this four be seen by this four? And the answer is yes, because it's in the same block. So what we can do now is cross out that four and guess what, that's going to become a six. Neat. And this is going to become a four later. Okay, now let's look at the, sec the next row. This row here is also part of the roof. There's your four at the top of the skyscraper. Here's your four on the other side. And let's do the same thing but in reverse. We take this four and we look along the row and see if there's any fours that this four can see as well. Well, this four can see those two fours and this four can see those two fours because with to be to see to see this, it has to be either a row or a block, and uh, and they both have to be seen by the row and the block in the, within the block. So this four looks along here and this four can be seen by this four, this four can be seen by this four, and th this four here. Therefore, you can get rid of those. But now you may ask the question, why can't we get rid of this one? Well, it's very important. You can only see each other if it's in the same, it's in the row or the same block. For this four to see this four, they can't because they're going to another row and they're going to another block. So that's important. So therefore we cannot get rid of that four that has to stay. So let me summarize this, this whole thing again. To, be the, to, to, to eliminate a four, that four has to be seen by something in the, another four in the block or the four in the row. For this four to be eliminated, it has to be seen by this four in the row and this four within the block. And it's very important. It take, took me a long time to understand that. But once you understand it, boy, well, look what happens. Remember, this becomes a six. This becomes a four. Uh, that six leads to other things. Uh, you can get rid of that six now and so on. And next thing you know, you solve the whole puzzle just because you knew how to pick out a trapezium or a skyscraper. Now, bear in mind that this is what you do in really tough puzzles and it takes a lot of time sometimes. Some people don't want to take go to the bother of putting all these numbers in, little numbers in. So they go to a computer, get a computer program that you just hit the button and there they are appear. They appear. But one of the skills of doing a Sudoku puzzle is being able to work out all those. And how do you work out all those? For example, you use outside the puzzle. Here we have a three, four, seven that is left. So you can put the three, four, seven out in here. And then you say, hmm, down this column, there's a seven. So that has to be a three, four. Look at this one. Down this column, there is a three probably. Yes, there's a three down here. So that's only a four, seven. 
This one here doesn't have a 3, 4 or 7. Uh, that's a big number. So that's how we worked out those little numbers. Just a revision there for you. When the next lesson is another lesson where we do some review as well as another one of these really complicated diagrams. See you next lesson. Bye for now.